questions. They are people of with the wrong tack, with the wrong gear. Saddles are not fitting correctly. There are people wearing martingales without stoppers. That is that is not should not happen at that level. You know, this is not safe. Look at the amount of falls happen. How many accidents happen in one competition, which are national level, which is supposed to be your cream? How many accidents happen? How many people crashed in jumps? Not it should not happen like that. If education was right, right? When you go to a school, when you go to a college, we choose so much into it. And Indians, I mean, as in, I've lived abroad. That's why one says Indians because in India. You look at people, why are we so successful as doctors, engineers, medicine, anything, IT? We are not successful in sport. Why? Because we don't put that same, what we put for the others in, in sport. It's the same. My parents did exactly what we would do for a doctor. They found out which is the best place for me to train, which was the best place where I could go with. Who was the best? Made sure they got to know that person, find out somebody who knows that person. But you do it if it was for medicine. You do it if it was, right, when you're, when you're sick, you don't go to any doctor. You, you will at least go to the bed. You will find out this, which hospital to go to, which doctor to go to, which people go down to the point of who, which nurse is looking after them. I was, because somebody had a good nurse. Now make sure you get that nurse. Even till today, we have in our society, India works like that. Right? If I, I can go to the extent even of an RPTC test, when a technician comes home, people say, you know, this technician is very good. Use him. So why are we not doing that in our sport? Why are we not doing that with a question? Why are we not doing that with our horses? Kids, let me tell you now, come, come into your level. You have to spend time with your horses. Only way to, for success is to know your horses. That's why I think this leasing concept, and I'm being very open today, and I'm going to be mocked about it. I'm going to be this thing. But we have to relook at the leasing pro 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 program, whether this leasing program is the way to go forward or not. When you look at a leased horse, I, this is my, a real eye-opener to me, my first nationals after 12 I won't say how many years because then I look, my age will give you more. But as you know, now I am 50 plus, but over 30 years, that same horse is going children's one, then he's gone into children's two, then he's gone into uh, uh, whatever juniors, then he's coming to young riders, he's gone in the ring six times. He's jumped before that in category C. He's jumped before that in category B. He's then jumped into some preliminary jumping before that. Then there's a mock, uh, there's a, uh, a Mumbai horse show. He's jumped in the Mumbai. Can you see that? What the, What is happening? What, what are we teaching the child? Yeah? The horse, no horse can jump that capacity or, or this thing. And also um, before that, in, he has been ridden by six different people trying to try him to see whether they want to lease him. This is that one horse show. This is we, nowhere in the world it happens like that. It, firstly, it's not a competition because your horse has already been in the arena with somebody else. So he's seen the jump. So say if you have a jump like a wall fence, you go into that, we are scared because we think, how is the horse going to look at it? You know, what? he's already been there three times with three other people. So we know that he's going to jump the wall. So where's the competition? So we, it's all about a luck thing then. Who's fast, who's good, who's there. So education is what you have to spend money on and time. On. So now I'm going to change the whole topic just to give you a base of this whole thing. What as a parent support group, now I'm talking to the mainly people who are also online, as an equestrian support group that I believe has been started. You need to put together a plan now is the time. This is where India makes a mistake everywhere. Even with the Asian Games, the Olympic Games. Look at the Olympic Games. We won seven medals. 100 people only in this country represented this Olympic. 1 billion, 100 people represented and we don't even know their names. People have forgotten the seven people also who have won the medal. This is our country. Nobody knows. And now they will be forgotten till the next Olympic Games one month before. The planning has to start the day after the nationals. This next week, you all, all must sit down and make a plan for the next year. That is how success comes. Figure it out. How do we plan it? And these things were done when we were young. When I was your age, we didn't have that many riders, but we had lots of coaching camps. The amount of trainers that came abroad, that's how we became riders that we were trying to become. You know, We had coaching all the time and we were sent abroad all the time. Every holiday, my parents or the EFI would send us, even the EFI, they would organize it, the young rider team, all the national medal winners. Everyone that won a national medal got an opportunity to train with foreign coaches. All that is gone because now it's all gone into how much money to, if you're putting that kind of money into leasing, you can go to Germany and spend three months eh, literally for the same price. So don't look at expense because you're putting it into that one round of jumping for so has no meaning because it's not your horse. You have not trained it. You have not ridden it. And three other people have ridden it before you. Think of about it. So you have to look at it. It's something that we have to keep a balance of. Of course, competition is important. Kid spirit is important. We need to keep well. Everybody likes to win. Everybody likes to win the medal. That also makes us wake up in the morning that we want. But it's also about doing better and realizing after this junior national, then what? Going international, then what? Going overseas, then what? Look at the riders that have gone overseas today and competing. They've achieved so much more because that's what it takes. We don't have the infrastructure in this country. Give them the foundation and they all have to go abroad.
because of our sport it's not like cricket it's not like hockey it's not like football where the infrastructure is there in this country that you don't have to go abroad to train in cricket right we have the system is in place every state has a system every state has training centers look at the amount of training and i'm going to say something which is even worse and i don't i don't i've now reached this point where i can't say it but look at the trainers today which one of them are training i till like two years ago i took a dressage and jumping lesson every day of my life every single day of my life till i was 47 years old i i i i took lessons because you have to keep up with the sport you have to keep up with the game the sport is changing the horses are changing and your and you have to, to you have to be at your best to give your best to your students as well right your students should watch you take lessons here which trainer i never i don't know trainers that are training they should watch whenever i took a lesson i made sure my students would come in fact one mother once told me she was sitting out there she saying uh, they should call me inti it's inti uh, he's telling me the same thing that you tell the kids i said it's not rocket science it's the same thing they watch the difference it's all the same but it's the timing of it the speed of it the looking of it and they also see wow so then they realize you know the other thing that we have to do is video we i don't see all these things this is what education the body it's like that with every other sport why not with the question a video is such an important thing take a video see come back and see your riding i've had lessons where i've had somebody video and this is a true story dress our lesson with one of the top trainers abroad really one of the best and she's saying more 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 i want more i want and i'm like giving it all i'm then you know you'll get a bit frustrated because like you know i'm giving it everything still she's saying more I mean, what is this say either i'm not that good or she's not seeing it then i came back i was so frustrated put the tv on put the video on and then i saw myself as it Shit, I was not going at all. <laughs> you know what? Now I understand what her more was because when I really saw it. So you also realize after that this is what she meant. You know, so that quality comes when it's that support team. And people say, well, parents are busy, parents are working, but they always waste it out. It how difficult it is to teach your groom to hold a video camera. Let him see it. It's only they don't have to take the whole movie of the whole uh, show. Just a few things. You're learning shoulder in that day. They can just take a few clips of shoulder. they can take a few clips of half pass if you're jumping a few days there the ground only the guy who's putting the jump just a phone pakro he'll take a picture a few views of you line you'll see your hands you'll see whether were you adjusting did you add too much did you take away you'll also see it then you'll also realize it's analyzing that it's that sort of education has to come in coming back with those coaches and trainers seeing where the future of your where you're going with your riding but that's all has to come together as one thing you need parent support you need mentorship you need the right coaches and let me tell you one thing if you have not noticed i have not brought this in at all is money not required at this stage people have got this wrong thing that they need money they don't it's work ethic you have the right work ethic the right places that top riders not everybody in the world has money and have reached the top there are two ways always in life the fast way if you have the money well and good or you can work hard and achieve the same thing it just takes a bit longer that's all it is okay i've slept in stables i worked with the but that's one thing my parents always insisted on me that if you want to go abroad if you want to train you train with the very best so i don't mind wherever you are so when i went the first time to america and i said i want to train they said who are you training with i said bruce davidson they said hey you serious two time world champion four time olympics and i said he's the only stable i want to work at so for two years i waited to get into his stable because i could not get in that was not I, he didn't know was any time not helping the one indian uh, kid but i said if i'm going to go abroad i want to only go to his stable because there's no point me going to b grade because what is the point i'm not i want to be a grade i'm never going to be i'm coming from india i'm at minus 20 so in order for me to catch up to come to zero i have to train with the that that level rider so eventually i got that break i went there the first day this is i'm just giving you an example that's why i want you kids to understand the first day he says Welcome to Chesterland. I'm Bruce Davidson. We start at six, and we finish when the last job is done. If you have a problem, you can leave at any time. The last table on the right, that is your room. I'll see you in the morning. And he left. That was it. That was the only conversation he had. I'm like, okay. Went to the stable. There's one charpai bed out there. That was it. Went to sleep. Morning. We got up at five o'clock. We had to do thirty stables. Had to be clean before he came to he came to stable. He had forty horses. and we rode from morning to evening i have never ridden so many horses and learned so much in this time that i was there i was very lucky i was very very light as a rider and he was a top and he had just broken his collarbone so for fortunate enough not because i was a good rider but because i was so light he gave me all his horses to ride because i was i did not have much damage could be done so i got to ride four star horses like in first shot there are people working out there for 3 4 years waiting for that opportunity which you get but you have to work hard for it i got it directly because i was like they should hurt curse me hey you're going all bruce sources 
I don't I'm a good rider. You know, that's a very easy. <laughs> You're not a good rider. You don't know how to ride. And I tell one, I had been winning at junior nationals, but you're nowhere compared when you go there. You are a nobody. You think, you know, I'm jumping one meter ten. I'm winning all these nationals. I'm winning there. When you go there, everybody's jumping there. Everybody's at that level. Everybody's beautiful, soft hands, giving, taking. They can see strides from one mile away because they've grown up jumping twenty and thirty horses. You know, where you're jumping one horse. So I got that experience out there. But it was not easy. Hard, hard work. One day, I'm going to give you just to break up this, to make it a bit of a fun conversation, just to break it up. One day, I forgot my spurs. So we were riding and he said, uh, Inti, where are your spurs? I said, oh, sir, I'm sorry. I forgot my spurs. Go and get your spurs. You cannot ride. I told you you have to have spurs. So how can you forget them? So I go. After I take two steps, he said, come back, come back. He said, I'm really sorry. Because you may be the king of Prince Nawab. I don't know what, uh, king, Rajas, Rajas. They call them Rajas in America. You may be a Raja. I should bring you the spurs, maybe. I said, no. he said, I said, no, 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 sir, I won't get spurs. Idiot, go and get the spurs right now. I went, stop, 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 come. Oh, today you forgot your spurs. Tomorrow if I forget your breeches, day after you come riding in your underpant, how do I know? I mean, you, anything can happen, right? You can forget your spurs, you can forget anything. You bloody idiot, you Indian. You know, this is the reason why you are, why your India is where you are, third world country. Useless, absolutely useless. Get out, get out of my stable. Uh, running, but again, come back. I was like, oh my God, how many times is he going to call me back? And, and he just lost it. After the lesson, he goes, hey, not bad, good, we rode well. Okay, come on, get on to my, one of my horses. They forgot it. See, that's the kind of coaching there. They are so strict because he's so thin that he, I didn't ever want him to forget his spurs ever again. That's, he, you know, a coach is that way. Like, you have to have that. You, it's not about always making feel good, making your lesson perfect. No, you have to, they are invested in you. We were boys who lived in that stable day and night, who were screamed at, shouted at, but we know something went wrong. Bruce would be there for us. He would stand up for us. He would fight for us because he's a man of principles. You know, that is what, how we were brought up. We were so fortunate to have people like this throughout my life, where you have people who would do anything because they it was, we were his team. You know what I mean? He was proud of that. But at home, he really bugged out us. You know, really, really made us work. But he gave us the lessons. He gave us the training. And he made us into riders. This is what we're not having. Who's here doing this? And in India, when I was young, we had that. We had the army. We had the uh, Colonel Khan, Brigadier Bishnoi, uh, you know, uh, Pickle Sodi, Billy Sodi. All these people, they were all invested in the sport to grow it. There was no money. Nobody had money. Nobody was buying and leasing foreign horses. There was no leasing, nothing. There was all about just lessons, lessons, and lessons. So that is my foundation of today's talk, okay? Is that we have to, as a support group, first thing we must sit down, if, if I'm happy to be a part of it, or it's your, as parents can do it, to figure out. It has to be done nationally. You have to unite. You cannot say Bombay is going to do this, Bangalore is going to do this. No, no, it doesn't work like that. Bombay is already a, 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 a hold. There is Bangalore that's a hold. There's Calcutta there. Everybody, bring one coach, coach down and everybody uh, join hands. We have to join hands for everybody. This is not the wrong concept. I'm training with so-and-so. You are training with so-and-so. We are, you know, we are this coach. No, 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 it doesn't work like that. We are too small for the world. And nobody knows the question in India. India is not recognized internationally. So until we join hands forces and see even if we can send one person every time, selections, committees, come put together, find out a relationship where we have it one stable, which is not interested in selling horses, leasing horses, buying horses, nothing, just about training and figure it out. And then strategically kids who are up to the left. So the kids also have something to work towards. But instead of sending, we can, we only so many we can send, bring the coaches here. There are so many, really, you don't have to bring the cream. You don't have to bring people who are charging 2,000 euro a day. It doesn't work like that. There are lots of top riders and coaches who would love to come down. Now, in my day, it was different because they would come down because they loved India. So we would give them the hospitality. ARC would have so many uh, coaches that would come out here in our, in our days. You know, get people who would come. But we would every day, they were taken out for lunches, dinners, family, people. Everybody had houses everywhere. They, every weekend, they were going to those people's houses. They just loved the holiday. For them, the winter was horrible. They all wanted to spend, they come to India for their win. So there are ways to do that. But we had fun. Like we had a lady, I mean, my, my coach, my mentor, for 30 years, I had a trainer, Diana Wilson. If any of you have read my book, you would have known. She was, came to the ARC, walked here in these tables and didn't know anybody, met my mother, became friends. And, and I was 11 years old when she started training me. And she used to give Ray. And nobody, all ARC horses, not one was even a thoroughbred. And we were all doing jumping, grid work, all of them were jumping meter, meter five, very comfortably. Every, I qualified for my first Asian game on a Katiawadi mix, trained by her. So education, she had us without on the lunch, without syrups every day. 
you know, till we got our seat, till we use our legs properly, till we were soft in hand and was such a lovely person. So these are the kind of people we have to bring in, not these high flying coaches who are there. They want to stay in five star hotels and they want, no, there's all, you got to find the, the right mix. I'm coming back to the same thing when I talked about the school, the college, the education, the friends, even as parents, we look at, you know, which friends should we have for our kids, right? You want the right, it's the right circle of friends that make it also, right? It's, it's the same concept, guys. It's the same concept. There is no difference. But it's the group, this, the, this parent group that has to work together. No selfish, selfless. You're like anyway working enough. So nobody, everybody, I can see the parents are doing more than my parents did in, the, in this respect for, for you as a sport. My parents always just made it available, but let the coaches run. Luckily, we had the right coaches and the mentors that made it do it. You're like a far more involved parents. But I think now put it in the right direction and group-wise. You cannot have a parent group, which is for you, young rider, junior riders as children's one. Goals are different. This is another mistake. No, if children one paper, a parent has to give an opinion about something that, no, junior one is ready to go to seniors. He has a different focus. He has to realize about horses, but he's now competing in a different frame of mind. Is he going to go international? Which discipline is he going to go in? So it's a different uh, group support that they need. So I think it's better to have one and then also have two separate ones for just not too many because it get too complicated. You know? Children one, children two, and junior, or, or children one, children two, one, junior and young rider and one. So you have different support groups. And then you make a plan for the year. How do we bring, but has, I believe it has to, which is going to be the hardest thing nationally. That's the only way we're going to have, we're going to be more in numbers to make it worthwhile and really grow as for the sport. All right. But bottom line is without education, we have zero. Absolutely none. Most of the kids today that were riding at the, at, the, at the lower level, junior levels were much more, you know, advanced. They know the junior level. They had no idea what a front or the back of a horse looked like. They had no. If I asked them even the questions on the side of this, uh, points of a saddle, they would not even know. They would not forget about points of a horse or knowing about management or knowing people own horses. They don't even know what feed their horses are on, how much feed their horses are on, how much their horses have eaten, not eaten, when their horses should be fed. They come to competition ground, the horses there. They don't know when the horses fed last, when, how long, how much the warm up should be. Every horse is the standard. Every horse is different. Every horse should be should be warm up, should be not warm up, should be have lunged it, should be rode it the day before. That's where the that's education to know your horses, to know what you need to do with it. But look, that's what I feel. We have to look after our kids because we got into this whole rut of leasing. And, and I think we have to improve the level of coaching. And that's the bottom line. I mean, I was shocked. And again, I'm going to say it, to see the amount of horses being ridden in draw reins. That's not, that's not riding. It is just absolutely not. I mean, who ride? The people jumping in draw reins. Even more. Unbelievable. I'm nowhere in the world will you see it. Because it's not correct. Because they can't control their horses. They're not schooled them. They're not. No, nobody's put the time in. And then they say they, I, they get the answer is that oh, well, the kids can't hold it. You got to teach them. It's like giving a kid a, 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 a person who can't walk, give him a walking stick. He'll never walk. Give him a wheelchair. Why not do that? Then he doesn't have to walk ever. So don't teach him to walk. Right. So this is what we're doing to our kids. We're actually handicapping them in 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 the long run and crippling them. If you do not teach them correctly now, don't run about the medals, please. It's not the end of the world. It's a wrong. It's not like every other sport. Our sport is wrong. What, what medal are you talking about? I'll be honest. What are you talking about the junior medals? You bought it. You bought it in some ways. There are some people who have not. So it cannot be a rule that everybody is doing the same thing. There are some people who have trained, who have lived, who have gone, left home. I know people who have left Bombay, like their families out here also, who have left Bombay, made their kids shift base to Bangalore. There's not, it's a big step. Live in those conditions, away from family. They're young boys still, yeah? 14, 15, that's like boarding school. We still wanted to be at home. But no, this is what our passion was this morning, evening, get up in the morning and ride then school the whole day, then ride in the evening. So there are the few who did it and those results came, you know. So this is what I also feel. Okay. All right. Let's go. Questions. And please, you all can also ask questions on, on, online. So I'll keep my eyes down and anybody unmute themselves and can ask a question. How do we get the coaches to do some leveling, one level, two level, three coaching, or uh, can, 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 can there be some kind of an education program for the coaches to, you know, maybe some symposiums or seminars? Or Absolutely, they should. I mean, to be honest, nowhere in, I mean, everybody, I'm a qualified coach. I mean, I've given exams. Yeah, you have, no that's the thing, you know, we are, we are level one, I'm a level two, I'm a coach educator. Actually, I can certify coaches. That, because that's what it's all about. It's about improving yourself as well. No? This is the sport we're in. You got to do it all. You can't just say, well, you know, I've got, I, I ridden so I can coach. I mean, think of it of any other sport. Today, I'm, I'm going to give it out there. Like you look at football. 
in the building there are a lot of people every a lot of fathers who play football doesn't mean they become coaches they can play a little bit i can play with my son he's a good football player i also play with the after point he's doing the moves that i don't even know those moves right because they are coaches to do that just because i played football or i played like for example i play squash i played squash at a very good level i can still beat but i can't teach because i don't know the the techniques the drills that sort of stuff you still need to learn those things no but until you, our coaches are trained and you're talking about you look at the smaller smaller towns and all that their coaches are really low level anybody just because they can you know this thing they become you know sawari become become still a coach ban gaya no because they are not taught correctly and you you would you do it in, in any other sport because you're a you were a good you played it when you there now you're in business come back so okay now on sunday morning i'll start coaching the kids No, these kids want to go somewhere. For the coach. Yes, that's what. But that's where the support group comes in. That's where the plan has to come in because you know their holidays. There's IB school. It's all a planning. You know, some schools are not IB. Some schools are normal school. So then you see which schools are where. Then those parents put together. Say, okay, now we're all together. Don't worry about who's better, worse. Nothing. It has no meaning. At the end of the year, the results which will tell. It's about improving as riders. So then you figure out, okay, now there are six people here. We are eight people. It makes it worthwhile to get one coach. Maybe he can come for one week. Everybody go to one place. Then at that time, you can think, okay, now how can we make it even bigger? Maybe we can do some coaching for the coaches at that time. Okay, maybe we can do some sports psychology at that time. So bring a sports psychologist. Maybe we can do a fitness person, yoga person. You know, you can add on to those things so that it's not a waste. Of, and get five people. Make the whole week into a productive, powerful week where you ride, you do fitness, you do assessments, you do nutrition, you do uh, sports psychology, you do you know so many other things. Even marketing and PR is something they have to learn eventually because if they want to do this as sport, they need sponsors. They're going to be on TV. How is your Around, good. You know which sponsor is going to be there. They're going to be, no. My round is fantastic. I love my whole. You know, then it's all training. You have to prepare your kids for these things, yeah. Because they're going to be a spotlight one day. These are all talented young boys. They're not like you know. They're all so good riders. They they love what they do. So you already got fifty percent there. After time, we're waking up our kids to get up in the morning to say, "Come on, do something." They are getting up on their own. They love going. They all love riding. They all why? I have kids. Even when I do a lesson, so give me another lesson. Give me another lesson. How many lessons can you have in a day? I don't. You know, there's only so. But that's what makes me want to do more. It's when I come for a lesson and somebody says, "What do you want to do today?" And they're like, "Whatever." Then you also give a whatever lesson. But if somebody comes, "Sir, can you try this?" "Sir, can you do skinny?" "Sir, can you do this bending line?" "Can you do that?" Then you also feel the energy. You know, then you derive the energy from the kid also. So it's the same thing. So this is again comes the parents support group to plan the year with holidays, with exams. All these things have to be taken into consideration. Then look at the coaches. Then see dressage coaching, jumping coaching. Then look at then the locations where we can do it from, age groups that we can do it from. It's and and make it you know so that it's how long can these people come for? So all these things it doesn't happen overnight. Then figuring out which coaches can come. Then the support group has to put into that that even the coaches have to be a part of it. There's no they they have to be. Because I mean, I cannot understand how the coaches don't want to take lessons. I mean, I took lessons more than anybody else because I all, all I want to do. I've trained with the best trainers. I mean, you name them. If I'm American, Australia, they would know me because I would take lessons. I was a lesson junkie. You have to get better and better all the time. Every horse, and then sometimes the horse. You know, I trained with a, a certain person, and, and it was very successful. My second horse, it was not. It didn't work. You change the trainer. It's okay. It's not the end of the world. You still keep your relationship up, right? Because it's it's something it's like maths and joy. why do people say oh somebody says oh you know like I'm just going to say because Shlok is sitting in front of me you know you say you know what's your best way for maths why because the maths teacher is very good actually it could be also that not because maths he's very good at maths he loves the maths teacher that's why he's good at maths also so all these things have to be taken into consideration okay yes what's the what do you think would be an ideal time and like say a level of for either say um this one junior young riders or Okay, so it's a very good question that uh, a, a rider here has asked, and he said that what is the time that we should start specializing? You know, because now we're doing dressage, we're doing jumping, and those are the really two sports that are there, right? So I also believe that in India, because the, of the foundation and the facility, that dressage and show jumping, you have to do you, is the way. But in order to go international, to be honest, I think eventing is your only scope. To really represent India, there are lots of people. They're trying it in show jumping. The money level is on a—it's unbelievable. Okay, you're talking about minimum level for horses. Average horses are half a million dollars. Half, you know. And who are you talking about? What are you, what league are you with? In the show jumping world, people who just come in is someone like Bruce Springsteen's daughter, Jessica. Now you're talking about that kind of money. You know, she father just bought her eight million dollar horses and she went on the Olympic team. You look at someone like a, a rider like Busy Madden, top top show jumping rider. Horse fell sick, so mm -hmm. some owner said, "Come on, we need Busy should represent India." So they said, "Let's put a pool in together." So quickly they put a pool in. They made it came to a very small amount, one point eight million, and they bought her a horse. 
you know, that is the kind of league you're in. So that is the kind of money, that is the kind of people. So where are you in that? You know, when you're looking at the people that are doing it, Jacqueline Mars, you know, the owner of Mars, Mars uh, I, I know these are people that we know, she, they are the people who are funding it, Black Entertainment TV, you know, the C, the TV Goodyear Tires, you know, those families, you're talking about in another league of people are doing show jumping. Now you can be lucky. I'm not saying no, of course, but as a sport, eventing is far more attainable and, and achievable because the horses are not at that price. So I always feel this again, my only personal view, so it's nothing to do with everybody. I think dressage and show jump is a great foundation when you're here to young riders. Then when you start going abroad, go and train with event riders, because even for eventing, show jumping is still at a meter 30, which is enough for India in any case. So you've got both, you could still show jump, you know, but the dressage is at a much higher level. And that is a sport where at least you can, the possibility of representing India is much higher than representing India and not only representing India, but even winning. There is a possibility. There's a, we can have a full team in the in eventing, you know, with the right places, people are training and going. Very good question. So I still feel dressage, dressage is the foundation. Frankly speaking, we have to spend that much time on their foundation, which is your dressage work. Okay. So without that, you have nothing because you need to learn to school horses, train horses, work horses. Abroad, here it's a bit of state of structure of society, right? Your work is who you are and where you are and things like that. Abroad, it's on what you know. So the more you know, the more you're going to move up. The less you know, you'll be doing stables. So they don't really have the time. So if you don't, you're, you're incompetent, they'll make you do stables. So it's about how much, how good you are and your attitude that gets you higher and higher. So what challenges did you face in your young age? See, my main challenge I felt was, of course, is not knowing anybody, you know, not, not having the connections, not having the, the type of, luckily I had the right mentors, but my biggest challenge was also, I was alone. No? I didn't have a support like y'all. It was just me alone doing everything. I was the only civilian. There was not a single person. It was only army and myself. So the, it was very, it was not easy to be alone. There are a lot of lonely times, hard times, but it's what we love to do. And our, our passion was then I dis wanted it. So the desire kept you going, you know, but it, so that was my big thing. You all don't have that. You all can go as a group because you all are such great friends. You'll all get along together. Parents get along together so well. How difficult it is for five boys to go together, all train for two weeks and come back. But until you go abroad, until you go in every summer, you all must be abroad. You have to go overseas. Every time you get a break, either the training, the coaches have to come here or you have to go. Because that's what you look at my place. It's all about education. That's all I do. The amount of theory I do with my students is more than anybody else. I don't allow any horse to be tacked up also. They have to come to the stable and work every They must know how to put a bridle on, how to put a tack on, how to pass the bridle, how to look after horses, how the management is, how the medication is. They don't have to do stables. We have people now in India to do stables. So we're lucky. But everything else they have to. And that work ethic. Our sport requires immense work ethic. But every sport does. I mean, if I would love for you all to see a video of Usain Bolt's, it's a, it's a documentary. You see his vote, see the amount he, you people say, one, one, two medals, how does he, three medals, three Olympic medals. Oh, which runner has done that? Oh, he's a very freak. He's not a freak. You look at his video and you know how, that's a freak. How he trains, he doesn't take a day off. Works so hard, but that's what it takes. No, the, it's not that everybody who sees the medal winning this, that, are what a lucky guy. No, 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 it's not all lucky. He's up at four in the morning every day training. Michael Jung, you look at his table, he trained, he works so hard. Unbelievable, he rides eight to nine horses every day. In fact, Bruce Davidson, once I came to a fence and I was, you know, I'm not very good and all that. And Bruce said, I told Bruce one day, I said, Bruce, I would love to be like you. You know, how do you, you never miss a friend? He said, Timothy, I ride 10 horses at a competition. I'm seeing 1,000 fences in a week. You see on one horse. If I miss, I must be a really bad rider. You know, so you look at it, it's a numbers game, right? So you need these boys need to be jumping every day, not the same horse, but but they need to be. That's what they need to do. Look at any uh, player. Look at um, Michael Jordan. How, didn't he see how many how many misses he had before he got it? You look at tennis players. You look at any of the Federer. All of them are the same stories. How many times have they hit the ball? Thousand times they have to hit that ball against the wall. Same thing with these boys. They need to be every single day looking at their strides every day on a pole on the ground and every horse just keep coming there so that they come. You look at the top riders and I'll say this in the at the Olympic Games. You really see the cream like someone like my Fuchs or any of those people. They're sitting out there with a baseball hat. Some of them got even a cigarette in the mouth. Not a good 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 look. I'm not. A, I don't. Uh, uh, push that, but they're that relaxed and they're coming to a meter 30 fence, just that, like, because it's part of their life. Every single day they've jumped meter 30. When they've jumped meter 50, they think twice. But meter 30, everybody jumps. So they come, that's how the attitude has with the kids, that they have to see those fences. How do they do it? Going overseas, getting that exposure, getting that experience, where they're just put in that drill and morning to evening, rah, rah. 
morning to evening. That's all they do. Their your bums should be so sore that you can't walk. We should come back from Bruce Davidson, literally like this. Sit down, and we should be sitting on there and we say, "What's for dinner?" Uh, we can't make a sense because there's no food. Banana, because that's the easiest thing to eat. What else to do? Because otherwise, you get up and cook again. But we did it. Don't want to do something. Right? You know. So parent support group. Come on, some parents have to ask some questions because it's about them. This is not about the kid. Their, their job is to rise. Yes. Hi, my name is Jacqueline. I'm the trainer from Red Earth Rising <laughs> School in Pondicherry. Yes. I don't Hi. think that ever. Uh, so I totally agree on almost everything you said. Uh, and I would actually like to take it further and try to organize some of these workshops you're just um, yes. talking about. Uh, however, I have encountered a certain resistance from other trainers that when you train with one trainer, you train with that trainer and no other trainer. And I think that's uh, something we, 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 we all need to work on. And um, so my place is definitely one where I would love to have the people and maybe we could get together somehow and organize that we could invite people from. Absolutely. Uh, I yeah. Okay, so let me just repeat your question quickly. Sorry. So the question here is that she's firstly agrees to most of what I was talking about. And she said that she would love to be the, the center for education as well. So people like this will Why come not? up. I know a place in Hyderabad also willing to do that. But she says she gets a lot of pushback from the trainers because they all want that you should train with us, you know, rather than getting people. So that was, is that right? Uh, not only getting people from abroad, but even with in exchange from like, if I would give a class to somebody, yes, uh, I'm open to having my kids go anywhere they want. Yes. And one horse, maybe that trainer is better, the other one, that trainer is better. But there's a very strong resistance against even that. Uh, there's yes. like, there be no other gods besides me type, type of attitude, yes. which I think we need to break. But, you know, everybody does whatever they want. Yes. Um, but I think that uh, a problem the parents are facing, number one. Number two, I would, you mm -hmm. know, I would love to, and I live in Pondicherry in Oroville, which is absolutely beautiful, and whoever yeah. comes loves yeah. it. But I don't know too many people, so maybe um, maybe you and me, we can talk about it, who we could invite and how absolutely. that could absolutely. forward. No, absolutely. So that's a good start at least. But then again comes in the parent support group. So this parent support group has to be very strong. Okay, that's one thing there. You command everything. You take control of education. You're not running events. You're not running shows. You're not doing voluntary. Think twice. Now, I'll give you an example. I gave a talk with uh, uh, Miss, what's up? And, and Popat? Uh, Aparna Popat. Uh, no, Aparna Popat. Badminton. Badminton. badminton player. Nine-time, twelve-time badminton player. So her thing was her, her parents also. They said we supported her in every way. Not one day, she said, in my, her whole training. And she has won more Olympics and more uh, titles, mm -hmm. nationals in India than anybody has won. And she said, not one day did my father or mother tell me how to hold a racket or how to move on the court. She said, that was not their job. Their job was to make me get there and be there on time. The second thing she said was, she said when she first went to the first junior nationals, uh, junior world championships, it was in Sweden. And she reached Sweden and she was a vegetarian and there was no food. So she ate donuts and played. Can you imagine world champion playing? And she won, but she won winning playing on eating donuts. So when she came back, her coach said, I'm not training you anymore because until you get some protein into you and start eating eggs, this is not happening. Pure vegetarian whole household, not a vegetarian, not even a non-veg, not egg has never entered the house. So she came back and told her mother. Her mother said, this is what badminton needs. This is what badminton takes. You will start eating eggs. Make your coach. The coach, you should bring. this is where the coach comes in. This is what I mean. So the coach said, no, you, I will bring the eggs. You will eat at the, at the court so that you, it doesn't go home. So she would, he would boil the eggs in the morning, come by train with her, with her nashta, then give her the nashta every morning. And then the younger sister would say, but even I want to eat eggs. She said, no, no you're not a good enough badminton player. So when you, when you get better, then you can get non-veg. So, you know, but that was the support. The parents were willing, even a, a family like that was willing to do it because they know what it takes to reach that. That is what the support you need. Okay. So coming back to um, the lady's question, I think it's important to put a... a what she also mentioned, which I think is... That you know, there's, there is this fear that, oh, if I train with this one, then that trainer is going to feel bad. Yeah, uh, you know, we, we don't want to offend Rena. I, I mean, it's just small things. You know, I'm, I'm train, uh, I'm, uh, I ride under this trainer. Now, the person is not there. You know, yeah, yeah. Can I use the other trainer? Can we go over and train? For, for three no, no. So I love your I love your question. So the question comes out here. This is a real major problem out here. Once you train with somebody, you can't train. But again, if you do it all, 
it's play for everybody will do it everybody will accept it you see so for me i think that's really important i have so many kids who are training with other other people they come and say i i will call the trainer directly up and say listen how you know what do you think what they like i've called bobin up so many times right i mean i have no problem what's the, what is the thing we're looking after the kid i can't be there in bombay so many times my other kid was there rang up nitin i said nitin i can't be in the ring will you look up is absolutely what do you, you know, what is there for you know for that level to help i said just give confidence this is what the ch- child needs because at that level you're not teaching the kid anything so the confidence to be there that you can do it you got it in you you know that's all they need to hear from a coach they don't need to you know okay hold the horse here push the horse there he's a good enough rider he knows what to do he just needs your confidence and that's what we have to instill in these kids at every stage so if we can do this and everybody works together because only then you have to break it you'll have to be the ones the pioneers that's what it's all about and you're doing it for your kids and it has to start look at the younger generation so there will be few who will not do it there are some who will stay with their trainers it's okay you cannot run a business run a business like that and you have to look at the big picture always you have to look at the country as an as a whole we cannot look at 1 10 20 40 even 100 people who cares there are over a thousand that ride right do it for them the rest will catch on if they don't if it's good enough if the program is good the rest will come i have i cannot be at every place the students that come from here all other people's riders and they go back to the original thing good great they should do it i mean i'm happy when they do well where who's horse they're riding who they're training with as long as they came to see horse to me it's fun. it's a thing that i actually was a, i feel i was a, a, a little bit of a part of their life of their life you know and that's what it's all about no but we have to get the education in i mean i cannot instill on that more and more i, I mean without that you'll have nothing zero absolutely zero you're just running around winning medals out here when you go internationally you'll be starting from scratch again it's a lady who owns a, a stable in pondicherry it was a jackie uh, was a jackie sorry was that jackie hello Yes, I yes, that was. Yes, they, I don't think there are so many other in Pondicherry. It's yes, crazy, it's, it's yes, 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 exactly. Did you mention? Yes, yeah, sorry, I missed your name. I, I do apologize. Yes, so that's just wonderful that she's even offering those services. I mean, but I'll tell you one thing. I always believe, and if you in my book, I keep saying my book because that tells you things. How many people, when you ask, people go out of their way to do it. There's nobody has a problem. Everybody wants to help because these kids, you see them, they love their horses. They are absolutely crazy about them. I have no preferences on any kids. All of them that come, as long as they say respect your horse, the minute you start respecting your horse, people will start respecting you. Respect your animals. That's it. That's all I say. Spend time with them. Look after them. Don't overrun them. Ice them. Manage them. Poultice them. Feed them correctly. Exercise them correctly. Find a plan. Find a program. Do it just like the way you go to school. Your teacher doesn't come and say today I will do trigonometry. No, you have to start with addition, subtraction. Then you do trigonometry. just like school you don't do third standard goes to sixth standard he goes from sec first second third same thing same thing with horses same thing with riding same thing with your programs same thing with your goals to achieve your actual end but parent support group is really really important yes this is another thing which i want to really special is say that, that when your kid is at that level you need mentors let me tell you i had many many mentors in my life but they should not be all equestrian and they should not be family so first thing why family no because it's familiarity so it's not, that's not way your family will still be a little biased and no, then no, no, it's okay okay it's a, it's a good boy it's okay no 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 we want we want the truth you need the truth you need people from different walks of life people who are successful people who live their life the way you want to live their life that's the kind of people you look at look at the way he lives his life the same values those are people choose them and put them into your kids lives so that they can meet once a month have a breakfast together and talk because i have led so many places i've read across road okay i i i give prime example coming back to india i would have never come back to india i was thinking should i come back or not should i come back or not this covid i'm living in australia i've got a perfect thing i was training the junior uh, australian young rider team i'd already gone international with them i'd taken them to Aust- uh, america and should i come back to india so again you reach cross road at all stages so then i spoke to my mentors one was in is in a question one was a is a doctor one is a person who's a ceo of one of the big companies so they give you different views they all are right there is no right or wrong then you choose with your family what you think is best but you must have these views given going to them we cannot keep on telling our, i cannot tell my son always what to do it's not as it is you cannot tell teenagers most of them right they already know more than we so that's already a hard one <laughs> so our job is to administer those people put the right people in a room and then help advise so many times you in trouble i was saying i don't know what to do mom would say ring up diana first thing first phone diana diana i'm in this call she's all right let me think about it i'll speak to himish 
That's a husband, CEO of the biggest multinational in the, in the world. So he's traveled the world, lived in Africa, Russia, he, like seen the world. You do a totally different view. I think in, in two should do, in two, the family called me in two. They said, I think in two should do this. Dan would say, but what about this? They would have an argument first as to what I would do. Then one of them would call me and say, this is what we think. So that's the kind of input I got. You know, for three days, they were not, no answers given immediately. Three days, they would go back and forth, back and forth. Then they would come back. This is what we think. Then I would run it by my parents. Parents said, not a bad idea. Now ask somebody else. So another person was we call local person like Brigadier Vishnu, Colonel Khan, all those people were in our lives. So everybody giving advice just for these kids. Nobody's worried about what, oh my God, uh, if you don't do this, then you won't be able to lease a horse, you won't be able to buy a horse. You, you know, if he goes away to somebody else, then we lose him as a client. No, 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 no. Then you, limited. Then you should not be with those people. Move away. <laughs> Yes, sir. See, as as a thing, what EFI is going to do? I'm not a part of EFI, so I'll be very clear. The question here was asked that you know when these kids have all gone to FEI children's or FEI juniors and FEI teams, then what is the future from there? So it is just a stepping stone of being recognized to know where you are internationally. To be honest, that's all it is. It's not a big thing because it has no meaning on the big scale. So somebody who has not done it or has not achieved it because they didn't have the horse or they didn't have the time or they were not up to that level doesn't mean anything. They haven't, they can catch up later on. You know, like in my time, we didn't have any of this. We had no FEI children, no FEI competition, nothing. We had no, there was nobody, there was only me. So there was never any other competition for, for young riders or juniors, right? But you can still do it by going abroad. But it gives these kids some international exposure, some sort of area pressure at this age to deal with that. See, it's also that pressure is really important to get in that ring, big crowd, knowing it's FEI. You, they have to slowly, slowly put that pressure on them because when they go into the big playing field, that's what it's going to be, right? Right? You have to be a competitor. You know, you can be one, one can be a really good rider, but you also have to have the nerves. You have to have the, you know, the uh, the patience, the 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 the, the mindset, you, the game set. You look at so many people's practice is fantastic. When they go in the ring, then they're nowhere next to the practice. But practice more. Pra do those things. This is another thing. I'm sorry. I, I want to also talk about it. And this is uh, Jacqueline. This is something that we could do together. Also, is do mock shows. They don't have to be expensive. It's about just us judging, but these kids need to get in the ring more often. They, they're not in the ring as often as I think they should be, you know, they should be coming in the ring, like even like a competition like this. There was a parent who spoke to me the other day, which is a wonderful idea that you have the facility. Kids are there after the national, they should have been allowed to practice so that, you know, if the lights, the TV have a coach there, even a place like this, when you have a junior national with you're talking about the best riders in the country coming together, there was no clinicians. So easy to have it. No? You could have coaches here, clinicians here. They could have done talks in the evenings. They could have shown videos. They could have shown movies. So many things could have happened there. Yeah? And leave out the authorities. This is something that you all have to understand as a sport. Please understand this internationally. The government does nothing for anybody anywhere else. It's private people, private funding, and private parents that are doing it for the kids. Everybody runs, and I'm not saying it to, to flag the EFI flag or anything like that, but people point, oh, the EFI is not doing this. ARC is not doing this. Uh, uh, Tolligan's Club is not doing this. The embassy is not doing this. It's not their job. Their job is to hold events, facilitate your thing, and do it. It's your parents have to do it. How difficult it is to have a party one day in the evening and, and have an, or, or five parents, okay, now we're going to have a series. Call all the parents. Have a hall. ARC will be happy to give it, they give it like this. There's not, they would be happy to do things like that. They're happy to support that. They can be expected to organize also, right? Because they don't know, because if they organize it, it'll be, oh, they didn't organize it correctly. They didn't organize the right person. We got left out. This is the, it's all rubbish. It ties us down and pulls us down. Let the kids have some input as well into the support group. It's important. They need to, learn. it's different than our generation. Our generation, we were told what to do, we did it. We had no questions, right? Sit on the table, we sat on the table. Now my mother and father are here. I don't know whether they believe that, but we would did that, right? But these kids know today they want to sit in a room. They don't want to eat this food. They don't want to eat that food. They have choice of restaurants. They have choice of this thing. Where were the choices? We were going out with a great thing. So we get them involved as well. So what, you know, who, who should we call? They know more than I know. Most of these kids are oh, happening at this FEI. This is happening at this competition. They're following the internet. They're following the views. They're following, but all about competition. Follow some training videos. There's so many amazing training videos. I just I had three, four kids doing the dressage on the on the leggy link. I tried to explain to them that there is no bend. Everybody's putting the inside rein and just doing the leggy. There's only crossing. There's no forward. It's a forward and sideways. How many times to explain it? I went online. I found out six videos that show you exactly how leggy should be ridden. I send the videos to my student. I watch this video every day. That is coaching. That is training. 
so they can see it. Oh, okay, this is what he means. This is what he means because I cannot explain it always like that, right? So watch it. So I went on the line. I went on video and I sent it to you. I sent it to all of them and I said, now you watch. Each person will show you a little different way, but all leading to the same thing. Like a teacher, two plus two is four. Now it can be one plus one plus one. That's also four. Half plus half plus. That's also four. But the two plus two is not always four, right? I mean, not only four. So it's the same thing. That's what we have to spend on education. So same with the jumping. Something is not right. Something is not working. Explain to them. To draw it. Diagram. Video. Striding. Make them map it. Make them walk it. Make them see it. Make them jump it small. Make them understand. Make them stop. Change. Do it again. Stop. Change. No. One jump round. I, this is what I saw. One jump. Five times. Ah, very good. Next horse. Wow, it was very good. He didn't see a stride. He didn't see a distance. He didn't know where to. Nothing. He just jumped the fence. It's a good horse. The horse knows how to jump. He's out meter forty horses jumping uh, ninety centimeters. He gets it right. He gets it wrong. He's on one leg. He's blindfolded. He still jumped the fence. Sorry, I've opened a lot of cards, <laughs> but I thought it was important. You know, I hope it grows. I hope people see it because I think together it's about positive. It's still not negative. I'm not being negative in any way. I want to be positive. Say we got to do it for the kids. We got to. That's the reason I came back, thinking that we can do something. You know, I was fortunate that these things I didn't have to do it. It happened. Mentors came, coaches came, trainers came. Just unbelievable. I the amount of coaches I had, the amount of people that came into my life to make my dream come true. Out of this world. I mean. Crazy people, like people you have never heard of, still seeing it because they see the passion. They will do it. I had, a, I mean, this is a true story again, just to end. I had a competition I used to go to, which is a very big competition, and I didn't have also ride in America. And every, and I know in Australia, every day I would go there, and whenever in the warm up arena, because I always in the warm up, because that's where you see everything. You learn in the warm up arena. These people come and sit in the stands. You know, you see what the top riders are doing. Go to the warm up arena. You know, you see how are they lifting the jumps, how are they jumping, and you learn so much. And whenever a jump would fall, I would run and put it up, put it up. I did this for I don't know how long, and one top rider came. He said, "Boy, you ride?" I said, "Yes, sir." Oh, okay. You every day you're putting my jumps up. I don't. I, I don't have a. Tomorrow morning, come and come to my stable. You, I give you some horses to ride. I say, are you sure? Yeah, 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 yeah. Just take the number for my groom, and you come tomorrow morning. I said, okay. I landed up on time. Never, you know, that's the thing. You there, oh, dressed. He was so impressed. Said, oh, yeah, yeah. I told you to come on time. She said, it's like five to six. I said, yes, sir. You told me to be here six, so I'm here ten to six. I was there actually at five thirty. I didn't want to be embarrassing, so I waited at the gate and then came at, at ten to six. He gave me some horses to ride. Through that horses, one one lady, she fell sick. So she said, "Oh, you know, I I need my horse to be work." She said, "Oh yeah, because this boy from India, you know, he's there. He'll ride you because you don't want to pay. He'll ride your horse free for you." So I rode a horse. I rode it two three competitions. She said, "Oh, why didn't you only ride it? Because you know you're riding it so well." I took that horse to 90, 80, 80 Asian Games, free given to me. It's like that. But if I didn't, it starts like that. And that horse couldn't even come back to India because from a quarantine could not go back to Australia. So when I flew it to Thailand uh, for the Asian Games, and after that came back to India, so she lost the horse also. She didn't come back also. I said, but I cannot bring the horse back. It's all right. What you've done for me and the horse is more than enough. It's okay. I'm happy. So it happens. So parents have to join hands. But think big. That's all I'm saying. The minute we start thinking only Bombay, only this thing, parents groups, then people get. They are unhappy. You should have representative from everybody. Everyone should do it and rotate it so that it doesn't only hold in ARC only in this thing. You know, the same coaches can go everywhere, and one coach coming can fly everywhere very easily. Then more people get it, no? But coaching, coaching, coaching. Please spend the money and send these kids abroad. Let them go. Let them get the experience. Let them get exposure. Let them work. If they want this, if they want this bad, it's on another level abroad. It's at another level. We really have to take it, you know. And you'll come back. It's like everything else, right? Experience, exposure. Any other questions? Anybody else online? I can see quite a few. So it's lovely to see all of you all, and thank you so much for coming in. Ah, huh? but the whole idea is to have this conversation open. Uh, this is just the first point meeting. Now the parent support group can have a meeting and see, and then we can figure out how we can get this sport going. How I can be involved in it. I'm happy to be. If I'm not, that's also happy. My idea is just to be as an advisor, to be as a side help, to just give. To 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 advise. That's all. It's that's the whole idea. Okay. Actually, I think we have started a a WhatsApp group for parent support. Okay. One of the parents. I met him three years back. Group is still there. What I get in that group is only good morning and good afternoon. Group is everything on WhatsApp, and I also get it. No, but I think Satyajit made a. Can can you like get it? Satyajit has started. Satyajit is from Red Hat Riding School. Satyajit, are you there? No, is Satyajit there? Just no, is Satyajit? Are you here? Satyajit, Anupama. 
Yes, yes, I yes, yes, yeah, 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 yeah. He has taken yeah, the yeah. initiative to thank start you. an Thank you, Sir Dajit. And uh, those who are interested, you can let me know. I'll have Satyajit or you to add your lot to okay. it. He's very active in uh, you know mobilizing all the parents. BG from Chennai is also part of this group. Why do you, in fact, Sanju? Uh, ஒரு <laughs> <laughs> that is the most thing okay that is efi problem that is a organization organizing group problem no nothing of that should be mentioned on the group that is their personal thing they can fight it themselves don't get caught up in that your job is only support group for your kids education training coaches lessons zilch that's what it's all about yes satyajit sorry no i'm um, they i just started the group but the initiative is now so it's okay. not like i initiated anything we just started yes. the group yes and uh, it was important because they, it was all fragmented uh, because parents would never see parents where parents would never get to understand what another parent is feeling or uh, there was never any transfer of information so i thought it was very important that uh, all of us get together and and share information uh, i mean i was like you said don't talk about the rules but but sometimes uh, i i i understand this the spirit and the uh, in which you're saying that but sometimes there's this very silly doubt you know uh, does this test is it is spurs allowed yes. and and most most often we we end up going in the last minute and going asking the judges in the last right. minute before the test now if one of us have seen the thing or one of us know it then we just immediately exchange oh yes that, no, that i agree yes. yes yes so satyajit yeah. has a valid point he said that he has uh, just started the group he has not done done anything is not an the initiative is going to start now so now is the time to get as many people all over india to get in or get on to this group but keep it nice because you know the thing is that it gets then nobody likes groups you know what happens even i am the one for family groups also i'm the one who gets out of the family group because every morning others you get one good morning and <laughs> so then you get you want to get out of the family group so keep it small but satyajit's point is true about certain rules and regulations like when kids are new parents who are coming to a support group they also wanting to get some information you know they don't know all the rules so they may not know whether is this per allowed or you know it can be used as whip so those sort of questions what i meant was they should not get involved at a show you know like some horse is not passed a vet check then you know what happened why then you know let's go let's let's find a committee to do some that's what they should not get involved in yes rules regulations should be where this what are the norms what are the things but that is where the education comes in we must do different level of education we have to spread it up so we don't want to waste a junior rider's time teaching them what spur they should wear and what whip they should carry because that's also wasting their time you know and we can bring some junior riders in to mentor the children riders it's just the mentorship program is something that can happen as well that every young rider should be mentoring the young the, the, the little kid Really that will help as well so there's a chain of three at least little ones the mid age and then us senior people who are on, on who are managing this as a mentorship thing so that they can be you know when you go and walk a course i mean i'll give you some there's so many young riders here sitting in front of me they should be walking the course with the children they don't need the coaches only they can do it they they've got the experience they got and they'll relate more to it you know then having one jamadar going around saying ye jump karo yahan se left maro pair dabao ye jump karo you know So thank you very much, Satyajit. That's really kind. So everybody through Ashton, Satyajit, Biju from the uh, from uh, Chennai is here. Uh, Sanju, Sanju is there from the Bombay. Sunil, they're all here. Just get onto this group. Get more people first onto the group first. Let's not start anything till we get the group. Then figure out a plan as to how we can move forward in in this field. It's not going to be something that's going to happen overnight. But slowly, steadily, we can grow about it and say, listen, how do we do just pure education first? You know. Sanju wanted to ask something. Yeah. 
No, but no, like a proper yeah. test first. Then after the test, they can we talk about it because the whole idea is to get to learn, right? Yes. Then jumping also and jumping they could do. We can do small. There will be full twelve fences. In the mock shows, why don't you do like style classes for jumping instead of like trying to win? Or yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. 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 So good point. So here there's a parent who has given this suggestion, which we can do in Bombay. I'm happy to do it anywhere. I have no problem traveling. Let me tell you this, because I think we've got to do this. You've got to do it nationally. It's to run mock tests. They don't have to be expensive. It's about a dressage test that kids need to learn. Even dressage etiquettes, they're not learning. And people are in a rush out here. Like yesterday, I read in the, on the map and I'm being really open. No, we are not going to allow you to go around the arena, you just ring the bell and start. Not acceptable. You should be allowed to do that. That is, this is your national sport. You everywhere in the world, you have to be allowed for the horse to go around the arena. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that's okay. That's okay. No, okay. So whatever. I'm saying, see, see, I don't know the all the ins and outs. I'm just giving you this is from an outside point of view. So what uh, mock uh, is a rider here, and also a parent has suggested that maybe we can do in the dressage mock tests so that kids can just come and do the test. I, I can judge it. Uh, someone like Jacqueline can judge it. Anybody else who wants to, they can judge it. Who has the knowledge, and then after that, you go through that test, and then in the evening they can redo the test again with those improvements. So therefore, then it becomes productive rather than just doing one test. Then they have to wait for three months for the next test to happen. They don't know whether they did right, they did wrong. They may have even forgotten it. But this way, it's videoed. It's taken into consideration. A video should be there. No, these are small things. Can don't cost money, right? So uh, another mock shows a junior rider. He suggested even for the jumping, we don't have to have a show jumping as a competition. We can do it in two ways. We can do a, like a mock on style and equitation so they learn so that the course is set all on strides and these kids have to jump the correct stride not about jumping fast jumping quick jumping no and then we can do a separate one where it, it is on jump off so they learn how to make those turns inside how to angle fences correctly rather than using just speed so we can put that quality in where they get practice of doing these things like where do these kids ever get a chance to do a jump off never so by chance you have that clear round you're in that's it you're the luck you get it, you get it. You don't get it. You have not really learned. Well, I could angle it because you've not practiced that, right? You have not learned how you can take an angle, how you can take an inside fence. You're just using going faster. Going faster doesn't always mean that you're going to win. If somebody can go a little slower and ride more tactfully, they can win. So things like this is where we can start with at least on a once a month support group can start once a month in different, different venues where it's not like an REL. It's not everybody's running, running for these REL and EPLs. MTRs? Yes. I think for me, you are non-competitive. Yes, ma'am. Imtiaz, um, we are having a show at the end of February and let's kick this off. I would love to invite you maybe for after or before and let's do exactly that. Let's give them a workshop before. Yes. You, and then let's do a hunter-jumper sort of competition. Right. Like they do in the US, Wonderful. And you could Wonderful. be the judge. I mean, yes. really, really. I mean, maybe we can connect on that uh, later on, but absolutely. Um, instead of talking, let's just start. Okay. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> what Jacqueline yeah. says, we're talking, let's just start because once the, we start and we pass the word around what this thing is about, it will grow. I promise you, if we set it in the right direction where there's no vested interest, there's no uh, priorities made, everybody has a voice and opinion and we're doing it for education. I promise you, those who don't want to, Every group, let me tell you, this is in anywhere in the world, there are going to be people who are going to be against it. Everywhere there's going to be people who are going to not support it. But those, you have to look at those who will and go forward. That's the way I look at it, right? I always say when I, when I, I, I'll tell you my own stories. When I first started this whole thing, I had also press, people writing the press about me. And my parents first told me this first thing. They said the fact that they're writing, that means they're doing something. Keep going. Right? You can either go the other way by seeing their writing and they say, no, I should not do it or look at the people and trying to address those people. No, no, people are going to write what they're going to write. Nobody writes about somebody who's doing nothing. So if they're writing, they're going to be good and they're going to be bad. You take it because that's the, that's what we've taken, right? Even when you ride, all you kids, yeah, people say, oh, he's lucky. He's got a, yeah, you, you, know, she, you know, you rode a good horse. That's why you won. No, good luck. Let them say that. Who cares? Practice that you won. <laughs> well, that's a good horse. Bad. That, that for them to decide, no? So don't get caught up in all these things. You know, he didn't have a horse. He had a horse. He's put this money in. Look who he's doing. Uh, this is the nature. You have to just look on the big picture, where you want to go, that we can have a team of, yeah, you know, that can actually do something. All right, Mr. Mtiaz? Yes, Satyajit. 
uh, I had two points. Uh, one, yes. we used to have a very nice forum called the IDDL, uh, International Dressage Development League, which was started by Kapil Modi. Yes. Where he would have uh, riders at their own venues uh, take videos of the test and he yes. would share the videos with uh, judges. Yeah. And they would judge it. Right. And this would happen on a monthly basis. So it yes. was a it was a lovely forum because the the, yeah. the, the riders got to see how they were yes. uh, progressing right. month on month. Yes. And they didn't have to move the horses. They, right. they rode the club horses. Right. They trained on the club horses. Yes. And I mean, this is something um, independent of, I mean, if IDDL can come back, that would be great. Right. But it doesn't have to be in the form of a competition. It can right. just be shared, like right. you mentioned. That is one, yes. one point that could bring that back. Yeah. Uh, which is video, uh, videographing yes. Yes. the test. We don't have to move. Okay. Right, that is right, one. Right, right. That is in terms of the uh, uh, working yes. the education. Yes. yes. I want to know about uh, uh, what you think about uh, uh, training in natural horsemanship, Pirelli or uh, join ups. Yes. yes. And how important do you think that is uh, for a rider? So two questions here that uh, Satyaji has brought about is that, you know, ideal, uh, the, the, there was a dressage league, which was started by couple Modi in Delhi, and he used to take videos and you could take a video and he would send it to coaches and things like that. Now we don't have to, whether we bring it back or don't bring it back, but we can do this also because the British Horse Society does these tests and you're actually doing a proper test for these judges. So it's all video. You do these tests and you send your scores to England and it's actually judged among all over the world. People are doing these tests. So you're ranked in the world with all foreign judges. And everybody's sending videos. So this could be a good thing. So I think that is something we can definitely look at as a support group, how to sign up. And we can do these uh, uh, dress searches, which has all been organized. There are, a lot, there are a couple of, I was one who's going to do it at my place, actually, because we have at, on the, we, we do it on the beach and we, were going to, we don't get the judges. So we were going to take a video and actually we were going to start this. So something that we should definitely look into. But this still doesn't take away from the training part. Because again, it's again, them riding tests all the time, but they're not knowing what is right and what is wrong. So it still comes back to what, what, we do, what I talked about with Jacqueline. We still have to do the mock ones, then we can add these and then comes the final. Like I'll give a prime example where the support group should come in, even for dressage, because I think it's so important. You have done one, the young riders, no juniors, they have done the same dressage test for the last three years, four years. You haven't changed the dressage test. I mean, how, how bad is that? I mean, dressage test has to change every year. You know, every six months, you should be given the kids should be given a different dressage test. You're talking about four years, they're doing the same dressage test. So what standard are you looking at? So, and also at a national level, you should at least have three, uh, two dressage tests. Cannot have every category do only one dressage. Low level, yes, one, because it's about just introduction. But juniors and young riders should be doing two or three dressage tests. You're jumping three. So why can't you do dressage three? Then you give a base of all the three and the winner of uh, the gold medal goes not to each, the winner of all the three because they're different tests to look at different things. But these are the things that we have to look at for if you want education. No, how can you do one test? Has no meaning. Three tests, three different judges, there's your winner. Okay, so that is one aspect. Now comes back to his second question. So that was his one about doing it online. Was what about natural horsemanship and joining up? Does it, you all know what that means? Yeah. So this is a very big th concept about natural horsemanship. It is about uh, dealing with horses the natural way. So they're very top people like Pat Pirelli and all that in, in America and all that who do this. So Satyaji, that is a good, again, comes back in the horsemanship part. If these kids come to camp, they will learn that in my farm, we don't call it nat horsemanship, uh, natural horsemanship, but that's what we do. They learn to trot up. They learn to hold their horses. They learn to walk. The horses must walk. How to lunge correctly, how to uh, you know, uh, do it, you know, horse to respect you so that he moves away from his space and things like that. So those sort of things which are taught. So this is where, again, that is not existing only in this country, where even the trot up, how many kids are really taught how to trot up their horses? You know, they must stand by the, the correct way, the correct posture when you do the horse should trot with you, you know, not pulling you like this and the horse is running away from there. So all those things come with the lunging, correct lunging, correct working, even the lunging. Now you see these uh, sizes lunging the horses, I mean, 50 of them is wrong. But what do I say? You know, they're going round and round, they're literally lunging the horses like this, you know, they're not even, there's no, I, you see it. Now, what do you tell them? So they absolutely right. That's where it comes again, comes back to the education part. If we have it in a slight format where they learn the, the joining ground manners, Tacking up and saddling, lunging, driving, different, different uh, categories. You know, you have four groups, like uh, Jacqueline can do one section. I can do one section. Somebody else comes in, does somebody else. And there's like Brigadier Bishnui. There's so many good riders. I mean, even the army, there are a lot of these older people. They know this. They've done equitation courses. They've done places like that. It's these younger kids that have not done any of this, actually. But all the older people, you bring them in. They love to do it. They will all do it for free. Let me tell you. Nobody wants all of them. I can guarantee you that. They do it because they love it. It's how we ask them, how you look after them, how you take care of them. They all do it. 
nobody has a problem so i agree it should be a part of the education but this test thing is a really I this mean, as a support uh, thing it's a very big thing i think a dress art we need to change that you cannot have one dress art mm-hmm. test and the same one for the last 4 years even the horse forget that even when you look at horsemanship the horse anticipates the test so that itself is wrong right because you've done it for 4 years he knows where he has to halt so therefore he's halting way before then your teeth are putting the leg on to make them go fast you know the good riders they'll know this that if it's shoulder in the horse already know so he already started shoulder one step ahead which is wrong so you don't want the kids to for the horses to be anticipating those tests so if they do 3 4 tests they also don't know what where to do it right because the halt could be at x could be at i could be at l movements are different places what was like this suggesting Now, one of the things that I was thinking about is like this training of trainers because I don't, I'm not sure on this at all. But I don't know if most of our coaches have done any coach coaching training. Yeah, yeah, you zero. Know, they, they've done the riding and then they just teach. Yeah. But uh, even riding themselves, how many people look at the? If you look at all the coaches in India, forget about them being taught as coaches. So how how many of them are taking really? lessons themselves? They okay, need to. Tra- why would you train with somebody? I want to train with somebody who's tra- who's already training at that level, right? That's who I go to. I don't want to go to has been or somebody who has not been anything. Then I'm going to learn what what is limited. I want to go to somebody who's already tra- gone abroad, improved himself. It's just like just like anything else in business or in in doctorate or anything IT or anything like that, right? You go to a doctor who's gone who's a top surgeon, right? You not go to an or why? Because he's trained with the best people. He keeps on even. Okay, give you a perfect example. Business. Look at all the CEOs. Don't they go to Harvard and do a, a MBA course after that one year? That short, what is it called? Not in one year. That executive, ref- training. executive training. Why? Because you have to keep improving your skills, right? These are CEOs of companies. They still go to Harvard. They go to Stanford. They go to uh, Berkeley. Why? Because they want to keep on improving. Technology, times, everything is changing. So why? But are in riding, they don't. Sport has changed. I mean, look at nutrition. People are still feeding brand. Who feeds brand to horses? Should not be fed to a horse. But how many horses are fed on brand? Calcium phosphorus ratio is wrong. I mean, it, it was used as a laxative. That also proves that it's not a laxative anymore. Now they're saying even as a poultice. That's the only reason why they keep it. Now that also they're saying you should not do. Do not even use a poultice. You should actually be icing a horses in a poultice because you with heat you're changing the temperature. So so many things on education here, yeah? on management of these sort of things. How to look after your horses when you, to get them to perform at the top level. Here everybody's giving inject. I mean, there are people who are giving injections left and center. You can't give a needle to a horse abroad. You'll be banned for two years. Now, do we approach the coaches? Why do we retrain the coaches? No, no. <laughs> they think we are totally. No, but parent support group does it by bringing outside people coming in. No, it eventually happens. You get if you don't catch up with the race, you get left behind, right? So you have to always think as a parent support group. We have to keep running. That's your goal. You have to keep going higher and higher. When I when I got, I'll be honest. This is another thing. I'm just going to give my own example. When the first 1984 Asian Games, I was only 19 years old and I was selected, right, to represent India. I was the only civilian ever to be selected, and I was the only civilian on the team. The night before the team, they dropped me, and they changed the team, and the team left, and they left me behind. Okay, so I did not represent India. So you know, it's not easy, right? So what did my parents say? Leave it. Go to a level where they cannot drop you. Because at that time there was no two star, so I went two star. Then I'm not. I'm in another playing field. Because nobody can drop you. Then I went to three star. Then nobody is there. So again, I they cannot drop me. So this is what I'm saying with you. Do with your kids also. Why are you fighting the game at this low level? Improve their education. Improve the level of riding. Improve their uh, this thing. They go to that other level. The coaches will catch up, or you move on. Imtiaz. Yes. Um, I think you underestimating um, the financial impact um, something like this might have on clubs. Huh? Like I. for me it's about the sport is about you know doing the best of the kids but unfortunately um or fortunately for me i somehow have a little bit of money left that i can i can do that without thinking too much about it but other clubs they do not allow any you know if the parents get together and say we want to have trainer a b c d and the club is not making any money of it there's going to be a big 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 resistance uh, oh, towards absolutely. everybody absolutely everything and the parents really can't I mean as what I have seen the parents cannot you know nobody can go to well I don't want to say any names right now but nobody can go to any particular uh, riding school say, I want to do this now I think it's going to be very difficult No 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 I think only, you need to involve the trainers also and get them involved and the owners of the clubs also involved because otherwise it feels a, a bit like the parents are going to force it down the throats of the trainers I don't no, think okay, that's the case 
Fair enough. Good question. But that's not the not what I wanted to say at all. I was not saying that the, it has to be financially viable at all. And I'm not saying don't train with your trainers. I'm not saying the club should not be involved. Whichever place you're based in, you have to involve that club at that time because they still have to host the event. And there is money involved. So absolutely. What I'm all I said was that you have to bring the education in and then it's up to the you cannot force coaches, right? So it's up to them whether they would like to take those coaching for that person for that for, for that person as well. That is up to them. But I totally agree with you. So I'm sorry. I just want to make it very clear if you felt that I felt that we should leave the coaches out. No, no, I didn't mean you have to leave any coaches out or any clubs out because all this financially has to still work. I always believe because I come from a business background that whenever anybody comes with an idea, the first thing I say is how are we going to pay for it? Then the idea Idea becomes worth it, right? Other words, everybody has wonderful ideas, but it's you have to make it financially uh, uh, viable as well. Even these mock tests and mock shows that we have, they have to be, they have to pay for it. I don't. I'm not saying I want to be paid, but I, they have to be paid for it so that the club can maintain maintain their facilities, maintain their staff, maintain their horses. It's an expensive sport, hundred percent. So re rephrase it. I don't mean that the parent support group should just say this is how we're going to do it and run it. I think we have to each. Parent support group has to organize it with their club, with their people and say, listen, this is what we suggest. Let's bring these coaches in and then bring it out to as many people, but have that same person going to three, four different clubs. So that is more worth his time and the everywhere's time. That's what I meant. These mock tests or mock things is much nicer that if everybody can organize it together, but make it finite and everybody's cost is different because a cost of ARC. Okay, then at ASC, is that possible? Because what I heard is that at ASC, they don't allow any other non-club uh, uh, hired coaches to even come there. I don't know whether it's true or not, but you were sitting with the ASC people there, right? So yeah, is no, there not any ASC doesn't no. allow non-club coaches. Yeah, that's she's right. right. She's right. right. Well, we have a lot of travel stuff. Yeah, but not when it's a clinic. It's only on a daily basis. See, ARC doesn't, doesn't allow on daily basis that like, people just come and, and teach them on ARC horses. That's yeah. fair enough. But when you're organizing a clinic, of course, I've done most of my clinics organized by ARC. When I was young, that's all ARC did was we should bring foreign people coming down. Elvin Hartley Edwards, uh, Diana Wilson, so many people came down. The ARC organized that. And we, we then you could use an ARC horse as well. What your point is that, yes, ARC doesn't allow because that's also not fair for private coaches to come and teach on ARC horses and not pay. That's also not fair, right? That you're talking about the same financial thing we're talking about. It has to be that it, yeah. their facility, their ground, their lights, and the coaches are. It's like me when I when I'm a, if I'm a businessman and I'm going to for a meeting and I want to have a meeting with somebody else at your facility, I have to pay for your facility, right? Like when you have a meeting at the Taj, you book the Taj room and you can have a meeting there. So the same concept. Of course, what the fee is, what the fee structure is different. But what I'm saying is that the parent support group talks to the, I'm just giving it because we are at ARC. ARC say, okay, we would like to bring this clinician in. This is how we should do, uh, you know. Then ARC organizes the clinic for those people. We don't have enough clinicians. We don't have enough instruction coming in. That's what we have to do more of. Are there any other coaches right now in this meeting? Anybody else uh, either sitting there or uh, in this meeting? No. Only Jacqueline. Are there any other coaches here? Yeah. Exactly. No, there are no coaches here. Yeah, there are, are any coaches. Are there any coaches sitting here? No, there are no coaches here today, Saturday. I'm the only one. <laughs> that's my point. Yeah. To be honest, I hate to say it that way, but that's my point. It's, it's not going to work because you all don't, they don't understand what education is. It's about how I'll be, I mean, I'm really care about it, you know, it's just. Uh, Were they invited? Sorry? Were they invited? Yes, yeah, everybody was invited. More for them than for anyone. It else. was in every group and everything. This is what I mean. I don't want to go into that. Let's, again, the whole group is about how do we get better education for our kids and how do we do it? You know, we can't get caught up into, you know, was this one invited? How is this one called? This coach feels that this, this club doesn't allow this. All clubs, I, as I know, they would love education to be a part of their program, not to invest in each individual and their future. But if it's as a run as a club for its members, they would be happy to do it. I can that I'm also saying it on behalf of them and not not even asking them. But this is what I, I would I would assume for sure. On not on a one to one basis, not when uh, that outside coach can come and train. Yes, of course. Why would you, you would not allow that? And, and nobody should allow that because you have to run your own business and protect your own people as well. This is on another level we're talking outside about. And theory, we have to add theory into these educations. These kids don't know anything about theory. They have no clue about nutrition. They have no clue about management. They have no clue about anything about the horse. They only know about the riding. 
that doesn't take anything. It can be done at general venues. It doesn't even have to be done at a school. What is the future of uh, the question in, 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 in Well, the future of the question is always hard because there's a lot of money. So it'll keep going. I mean, there's no, there's no stopping. I'm just trying to make this a part that can we make a difference? That's all. That's the whole idea for mine is can we make a change? Can we make a difference? It's about, it's about one person does it, right? Then, then people realize, okay, we can do something for our kids. That's the only thing. Of course, it'll, it's, nothing's going to happen to the question. Arias will keep on, EPLs will keep on, shows will keep on, wherever they're, everything will carry on, nationals are going to happen. Mm-hmm. It's happened for 20 years. It will keep on. Yeah, more and more people will keep coming and more and more public. But whether it's growing in the right direction, that is what we're looking at. Whether the education is going, that is what I'm interested in. Mm-hmm. Many other factories also, and we've seen the kids in the national field. Can you guide us to what level are our sick children? Why children compared to the children abroad, or the junior kids compared to the junior abroad, so that we get a realistic idea. idea of what so, the question was that whether our kids, as juniors and young riders, are, are at the same level as internationally. Okay, so I think as a you always you have a cream. A few of them, they're at, at the same level. But as a mass, they are far ahead. So we don't have the numbers. So if you look at a handful, I would say 10, 15 riders of the top riders of the junior category or the children's category, yes, they would match yourselves abroad as well. But in management, absolutely not. Not even close. Even a young kid there at eight years old, seven years old will know more than a junior or a young rider about their horse, what they eat, what, because they have the pony club program. You see, the, they've, they've learned, they have to do theory, they have to read books, they have to learn about their management, they have to learn about their, they have to look after their own stuff. Here we have sizes looking after them. They, they get off and the size takes the horse to the stable. But I've been to competitions where the rider has not even gone to the stable where the horse has gone back to. That's not acceptable. Not acceptable. You know, you have to at least go back to see your horse, trot your horse up the next morning. They're sleeping in. We jumped yesterday, so today we'll have a rest day. No, next morning is more important to see how your horse is done. But how can you? Because it's leased to two other, ten other people. So there's no management comes in as well. So these are the things where we, we have to match it also. No? For me, every horse that jumps gets ice, gets poultice. And the next morning, I trot him up to see where they was he saw, how is he? Because if there is something, you know it sooner than later. Two days later, something happens. You don't know whether it was because of the jumping or because it was something else. That is where the management comes in. That is where there's not enough time with the horses. That's where they need to spend more time in the stable than actually in the ring and riding. That's the biggest thing for in order to be a horseman, in order for you to move on, you know, and people respect that, see that. And that's how you get more horses, more rides and you get better, you know. All right. Thank you again, Satyajit, for the first initiative. I'm, uh, you and Ashton were really uh, wonderful in putting this together. So, but I really want to thank you for this thing. As I said, I'm happy to help in any way, happy to be supportive in any way. But I think if we stick to education clinics, and as, as Jacqueline has so kindly started saying, let's just stop talking and kick it off in the first time. Let's do something big in February and do it. You know what I mean? Whether it's mock tests, whether it's talks, whether it's nutrition talks, whether it's something or the other, whether we can get, let's, let's do it. Can we try to arrange? Yeah. Thank you again. Huh? Thank you guys. All just, for... I'm going to call you. Yes, please. Please take my number from uh, Ashton. If anybody doesn't have it, I'm sure you have it. So, uh, Sanju uh, uh, also has my number. Uh, we can put on the group. It's all about having an open discussion. Some people, you know, you can also do it privately so that, you know, sometimes it is, we don't want the whole group to be involved all the time because it's about trashing an idea. Maybe just like the person said about, you know, how the clubs may not accept it. Yes, I'm not sure as well, but we can work it. It's all about working through it, talking about it. It's not about moving away from group. It's about getting more inclusive than exclusive. I don't believe in that. I only believe that the only way to success is inclusive. We have to get more and more people involved. Then only we can have success. Through that. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, guys. All right. Thanks thank so you, much, thank guys. You, thank you. 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 Thank you.
I recorded, I didn't record the earlier part, like the first five minutes. But whatever I've got, I'll put it on YouTube for me. That's easiest, and I'll send the link. So if anyone wants to watch it. Okay, but give me a couple of hours to do it. Bye. Thanks, Abhijit. Bye. Bye. Thank, Thank you, everyone. Bye. Thank you, Abhijit. Thank you so much. Thank you.